Hey everyone, it's Maddie of Evil's Cosplay. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make the props of Himiko Toga from Boku no Hero Academia. Before we start, you can find the full list of supplies used in this tutorial plus a few links in the description below. Let's first start with the scarf. I cut out a template from a sheet of poster paper to use as my guide. The poster paper wasn't long enough, so I elongated it by connecting another piece. The shape was 33 inches long and about 4.5 inches wide. To make it perfectly symmetrical, you can draw one side, cut it out, and then fold it in half and trace around the edges of the opposite side. I transferred that onto a slab of Airtex high density foam, leaving 3 inches on the top and bottom to roll over the edges to give it a more dimensional look. I was thinking of using EVA foam initially, which could also work, but I decided to go with a less rigid look. Once I cut that out, because I'm indecisive, I cut it down by another inch on each side. I then secured the edges with some hot glue. I glued a small section, folded it over on the black sharpie line, and held until dry. I did that until it was secure all the way down. The same goes for the opposite side. It should look like this so far. Next, I used the template from before to trace onto a piece of dark blue fabric. Once again, I added a few inches on each side to have ample fabric to wrap around the entirety of the scarf. Using hot glue and contact cement, I folded the fabric over the foam and attached it. Before I adhered the other side, I connected the back with hot glue. I also added a line of glue over the seam to secure it. I was then able to wrap the remaining fabric over the other side. It's a little tough, but try to eliminate buckling the fabric as much as possible. For the teeth, I used white 10mm EVA foam. I drew and cut out the teeth individually to use as templates first, then transferred those onto the foam. I cut them out with a sharp X-Acto knife. Don't worry about getting perfectly clean lines, because we'll be dremeling the edges anyway. To smooth out the edges and define the shape of the teeth, I used a Dremel with a sanding bit attached.
Once everything was cut and sanded, I applied a layer of white acrylic paint to each tooth, followed by a coat of glossy Mod Podge for a slight sheen. Once those are dry, begin applying the teeth onto the scarf individually with a hot glue gun. To make the syringes, this is where the empty travel size hairspray cans come in. These cans from Not Your Mother's are nice and lightweight, and you can easily pop the caps off to reveal the interior. For the green details on the syringes, I cut out six 1x5 inch rectangles from a craft foam sheet. Two of those will have to be slightly wider to accommodate the tail that hangs off the end of the top syringes. Spray the empty hairspray cans with a few coats of silver spray paint. Spray the foam pieces with a few coats of dark green spray paint. Once everything is dry, secure the foam pieces onto the cans with hot glue. Each can should be stacked in groups of three and secured with a glob of hot glue. This should be the end result. Secure the syringes onto the side of the finished scarf. Hot glue will probably not suffice, so I also put some E6000 glue on there as well. When finished, the scarf should be able to slip over your head without trouble. Let's now tackle the boxes on the belt. I couldn't find the exact size box I wanted online or in craft stores, so I decided to make my own. I wanted the boxes to be 5 by one by three and a half inches. So I cut out four 5 by three and a half inch pieces, four 5 by one inch pieces, and four three and a half by one inch pieces with my X-Acto knife from that four millimeter EVA foam. For the detailing, I cut out 16 small rectangles at one and a half by one inch. Those will be attached to the front of each box later. In order to attach these boxes onto the belt, I cut two one and a half inch slits onto the back panel of each box. The elastic can slip through these later. To assemble the box, I used hot glue to piece together each side. And then I added the smaller rectangles to the front of the completed box. Repeat once more to create two boxes. If there are crevices or rough edges, feel free to dremel or quick seal in areas. Once together, spray with a few coats of dark green spray paint and seal with a clear coat. The leg straps are similar, except I used two jewelry boxes to make it a little easier on myself. I just had to hot glue a small foam insert piece into the open end of the box. Those foam pieces have two one and a half inch slits in them for the elastic to go through. You can now weave the elastic through the slits on the back. Once the elastic straps are measured to fit around your thighs tightly yet comfortably, 
You can sew the ends together by either hand sewing or using a machine. Cut off the excess elastic. For the blood machine, I used two 32 ounce clear bottles, available in the description below. I measured the space I wanted between them and then cut two 3 by 4 inch rectangles from the 10 millimeter EVA foam. I glued those together with E6000 adhesive and waited for it to dry. The edges were a little rough, so I dremeled them. Once that piece looked nice and clean, I measured out where I wanted the slits to go on the back of the bottles. With an X-Acto knife, I cut two one and a half inch slits into the back of each bottle with about three inches of space in between. I tested how the elastic would fit through the openings before painting. I used a large safety pin to make it easier to grab the elastic and pull it through the slits. I then used hot glue to adhere the middle foam piece onto the two bottles. To make it extra secure, I put a line of hot glue on each side of the foam on the back of the blood machine. This is now ready to paint. I applied multiple coats of dark green spray paint and a clear coat to seal it. Once dry, the boxes and blood machine can be attached via the blue elastic. You can add a buckle to take it on and off easily, or just sew the ends together with a sewing machine like I did. With your belt and scarf on, you can measure out the clear tubing and attach each tube to the syringes. I glued each tube to the back of each syringe with generous hot glue usage. It wasn't necessary to glue the tubes into the bottles of the blood machine, since three of them in the neck of the bottle fit securely. It is also easier to store and travel with if you can remove the tubes from there. You will just need an extra set of hands to fit the tubes in for you each time you wear the cosplay. The last thing to tackle is the mask. Luckily, I had a dust mask that I could fold in half and use as the template. I traced one side of this onto poster paper and cut it out. I then transferred that onto a sheet of four millimeter EVA foam two times and cut those out using an X-Acto knife. I mirrored those two pieces and attached them in the center with a line of hot glue. I recommend contact cement for this, but I had run out at this point. Don't worry if this protrudes out in a weird way. We'll sand it down later. Once molded, I dremeled the center to get rid of the awkward point in the middle of the mask, creating a rounded edge. This takes a bit of time and patience to sculpt. Once you're content with the shape, feel free to fill the crease with quick seal if necessary if you have any crevices. Since I have a dust mask, I could wear this and put the foam mask over my face to mold it. I used a heat gun to heat up the foam and then fit it around my face accordingly. Do not do this if you don't have a mask to protect your face, since the surfaces get very hot. Alternatively, a wig head is a viable solution. Next, I drilled holes into the mask using a Dremel. Be very cautious with this, it is very easy to lose control of the Dremel and scrape the mask you just spent a bunch of time making. You could also use a regular drill. I added four holes on the top and bottom of each side of the mask to connect the tubing to. Cut out eight pieces of corrugated tubing, each piece shorter than the previous one. Place through the two holes and secure in the back with hot glue. It is now ready to be painted. Before painting the mask, you may want to add a coat of Mod Podge. Once dry, spray with multiple coats of black spray paint. And don't forget that clear coat. Once this is completely dry, use a small paintbrush to glaze the tubing with a coat of silver acrylic paint. 
If you lightly apply the paint, it will be harder for the paint to sink into the crevices of the tubes, which is ideal in order to keep them black. To keep the mask secure, cut two small slits into each side. You can thread a thin black piece of elastic into them that's long enough to fit over your ears. Secure with hot glue. And this is the last step. Thank you so much for using this tutorial, or even if you just gave it a watch. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to message me on my Instagram. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a like, comment, or subscribe for more cosplay and streaming content. Alright, see you next video!